Can you tell me about uh, how you came to decide to stop writing for Extra West? My, my main problem with Extra was the online forum, the completely unmoderated online forum, and the kind of feedback that that and trolling that was going on. I was finding that increasingly hard to deal with. And um, the editors were always saying, look, we'd like you to engage with your readers. But those, they weren't my readers. They, they were trolls. And a lot of them, not all of them, but there was enough of that going on. And um, so I found it was starting to seep into my creative process in a way that I felt uncomfortable with. Like I would think to myself, well, I'd like to write about this, but pff, no fucking way. No way would I ever put that out there for that bunch of yahoos to, you know, go at and, um, and tear apart in an unmoderated forum. And the, the worst troll I think had like a Google alert so my column would go up and about 45 seconds later sh that would be the first comment and that stays the first comment right and um, so, so I found myself starting to sort of let that the concern over what how things were going to be met or the kind of feedback or how personal I could get or wanted to get was starting to be dictated by forces other than my own ethics or my own sense of what I wanted to talk about and that to me was that's a dangerous that's a real dangerous zone for any artist to get into so I decided that I, I wasn't uh, I was done it was 11 years I'd sort of I had a lot of sex success with that sex I had a lot of sex as a result of that column as well but I had a lot of success with that column and um, uh, readership all over the world and you know all the things that you hope for and that, that, but that I was done and that I wanted to concentrate on bigger things like longer yeah coincidentally spring of 2012 you and Ray Spoon decided you wanted to work together and make uh, a show that resulted in this book gender failure yeah we we were uh, We'd been touring for off and on for a few years, this show called You Are Here, which is a great show, but it was like family stories. And the only queer or trans content in it was us. Like, if it, it, any other two people could have been substituted in our place, not really, but you know what I mean. Like, it, there was no con that mm -hmm. we were not the content at all. And, uh, and I liked that show, but we were. We were sort of done it, and we were we were in a green room in the suburbs somewhere, and Ray was like, "I want to do a show all about. I want to do a show about what it's like to be a trans person navigating all this. I want to talk about all the things that we're not supposed to talk about, like what it's like to sit through a sound check and have the guy go she, and me go he, they, she, they, she, they." And you know, um, and have to sort of suck it up and swallow it all the time, or like make like this isn't happening or going on like we, we and Ray said let's write a real room clearer of a show that was the quote let's write a room clearer of a show let's write about everything we're not supposed to talk about every single thing that we're not supposed to write about or think or you know let's let's do it so we started working on the gender failure show um, about two months after that conversation actually we started right away we started collaborating together in April that year yeah at the same time, after 19 years of binding, at age 43, uh, you decided to have breast removal, a uh, third major shift uh, in, in your life, a transformation at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's really one of the most engaging and fascinating parts of this new book. Your clear description of, and funny description, of what happened to you. Yeah, I mean, I that's my slant on the world. Like, I think the world is hilarious and ridiculous. Um, and one of the things I like doing is f finding the funny and humorous parts of what, in other ways, were very difficult uh, circumstances or trying times, right? Like, that's the way that I process those things. And some of it was ridiculous, like, and some of it is, you know, 
Like when you say measure twice, cut once to the surgeon, <laughs> <laughs> to me that's hilarious, right? But it's also like at the, at the heart of that is, hey, don't fuck this up. Like this is my physical vessel here. Like huh? I'm joking, but I'm also dead serious. Like please, measure twice. One of the Cut most lines. amusing parts. Mm -hmm. One of the most amusing parts of the book for me is when you went to the psychologist and you had to not be too crazy, but not be too well adjusted that they wouldn't do the operation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which was humorous, but it was also obviously true. It's very true, and um, one of the reasons why that's part of the show is and the book is so funny for other trans people is that we've we've all been there. Like it's a very paternalistic kind of a. Um, experience still like one of the funniest parts for me funny peculiar as opposed to funny haha -ha, is that uh, one of the one of the delays for me was waiting to find a psychiatrist who could assess me that hadn't read my work in their how to be nice to trans people like sensitivity training so maybe at that point someone might have gone time out Maybe we don't need to do this. Maybe Ivan knows exactly what Ivan wants because Ivan's been talking and writing about this stuff for 20 years, but still there's this thing that has to be checked off on the form. So yeah, the, that whole, and then talking to other trans people who are like, wow, those are the same questions they still ask you, hey? The exact same questions they asked in 1974. Like, I would have thought maybe we had sort of had advanced a little bit, that they might be a little bit more nuanced. And uh, I mean, the, re the some of the stuff that, some of the things that I find the funniest in gender failure are absolutely not, they're, they're not funny at all. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, the reason that they're funny is because they're ridiculous. Because, but they're funny because they're true. I guess. I don't mm -hmm. know. I'm not being very articulate. I'm sorry. And then the fourth thing that happened in the spring of 2012 is you accepted Ray Spoon's phrase that you were going to go into gender retirement. An excellent provocative two words put together that have never been put together before that forced people to consider a huge idea. Yeah, that's Ray's term, gender retirement, um, and and uh, I I accept that I'm a gender failure for sure, and that was it was actually very liberating to go. Actually, I'm not. I'm opting out of this whole deal. I'm not. I Ray, I think, is a little farther along on that. Like, really, um, really has opted out. Like, won't make decisions based on what is expected of them in, in really fundamental ways and, and I, I'm, I'm, that's a process for me but yeah I'm a, I'm, I'm a proud gender failure well I, I, I don't uh, I, I don't opt into either box and um, and it's amazing how freeing and then when you actually like consciously say I'm not making decisions based on what expectations of my gender are supposed to be whether that be male or female when you actually consciously make that decision then you start to see how many of our decisions we actually make based on what society's assumptions of our gender like lead us to expect from ourselves does that make sense yeah